Welcome to Tidbits for Thailand, baby. It's a beautiful day. And I want to talk to you about, well, this is geared a little bit more to everybody. And I want to talk to you about how it may be better to rent than it is to buy. And this applies to wherever you are in the world. I truly believe this. So, let me tell you a little story here. I arrived in Thailand after leaving the United States on July 4th, 2022. And when I arrived here, I spent a month in a hotel because I didn't know what I wanted and where I wanted or anything. But I quickly decided I, I'd rather have a condominium. And uh, that later proved to be a mistake that I really wasn't extremely happy after a while in that condominium for a number of reasons. But had I bought a condominium, I would have been really unhappy because now I'd be stuck with how do you dispose of it. So let me propose something to you. And I know some people are going to shriek at this. But for the last 15 years, Bitcoin has been the best store of value over any five-year period, any 10-year period, or any 15-year period of any commodity in the world. So... Let's say that I was paying at that condo about $1,450 a month for rent. Now, maybe I could have bought that condo for, oh, I don't know, $100,000. It was in a very, very exclusive part of Bangkok. But let's say you could buy that condo for $100,000 and you decided to buy it. So you didn't have to pay that two, 2000 a month rent. Well, after a year, 2000 a month, well, shoot, my God, that's $24,000 a year. But if you had taken that $100,000, at the time, Bitcoin was on its down cycle. It was off its all-time high, which it's sitting right at its all-time high. In fact, it's made a new all-time high twice in the last couple of weeks, but it hasn't held it. It come right back down just under it. But back then, you might be able to buy Bitcoin for anywhere as low as seventeen, eighteen thousand dollars to twenty thousand dollars per coin. Well in, in round numbers one coin is up fifty thousand dollars. One coin. So instead of buying the condo, if you would have Bought the Bitcoin for the hundred thousand. You would maybe got five coins. Each of went up maybe fifty thousand U.S. dollars. Well, that's two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. You paid twenty five thousand, twenty four thousand in rent. You're up two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. That leaves. $225,000 in round money that you're profiting by taking the money you would have bought something with, putting in Bitcoin. Little fact here, no one who's ever bought Bitcoin in 15 years 
has held the Bitcoin for four years and not made money. And we're talking a lot of money, a lot of return on investment. I fully believe that Bitcoin's gonna be substantially higher in the next 10 months. After that, I'm not sure yet. But by substantially, I mean substantially. So if you're, if you're sitting there in the United States, I had houses that are paid for. And yes, all you had to do was pay the taxes, which were outrageous. You had to pay the electric, which was outrageous. The maintenance was expensive. You had to, you know, pay to have the grass cut and you paid to have the driveway shoveled and you had to pay, if the roof was bad, you had to pay for that. Uh, if anything leaked and caused damage, you had to have it fixed. It, it wasn't cheap, okay? But had you taken money and decided to sell and rent, I think in the long run, you'd be ahead. Plus, if you're not happy where you are renting, you can always pick up and rent somewhere else. Maybe someday I won't be happy here in Thailand. Maybe I'll pick up all my stuff and put it in a big old cargo, uh, one of those metal boxes, put it on a ship and ship it to somewhere else, maybe who knows, it may be some island somewhere, or maybe the Philippines, which is an island somewhere, maybe anywhere. But if you're not happy where you're at, you can leave when you're renting. When you're buying, you're a little stuck. But on the other hand, especially in a foreign country, uh, you end up paying for it in full because it's real hard to get a loan in some places. So let's say America, you put your, your five or 10% down. You still got to make big payments on top of the five or 10% you put down. So you can take that 10% you put down and put in Bitcoin and you might be able to just, that 10% down might squeak out the entire rent payments and some. I'm just something to think about when you're when you're living somewhere else owning owning a hard asset like real estate is not the not the best asset in the world to own especially not anymore especially if you're a person who believes in going to where you're treated best. Because if you grow roots by ownership, it's hard to move. Now, I personally like it here in this Poolville a lot right now, but that's a right now. You know, what will it be like in three years from now? What will I want to do? Well, I'm telling you, my thought is it may be very easy for Bitcoin in the, it's at 70,000 now, 69 to 70,000. It's easily over a hundred in the next few months. It may actually hit 150 or 200. I'm, I'm not sure, but I know one thing. It's not going back to 10,000. It's not going back to 20,000. It may go back to 50,000. It may go from 70 to 50, and that might be tomorrow. So keep a little powder dry, and if it hits 50,000, back the truck up and buy a boatload of it again. Because it's going back up, supply and demand. I mean, in real terms, 
the U.S. dollar buys less and less and less, whereas in real terms, your assets held in Bitcoin buy more and more and more most of the time. I mean, it's, it's, it's that simple. The cost of everything in U.S. dollars goes up when it should be def deflationary. All prices should drop to the marginal cost of production. But they don't because they keep printing money. And they're going to have to keep printing money. They've got no choice but to keep printing money. What do all the politicians come out? They all talk about, well, we're going to do some sort of tax the rich. And the other side says, no, we're going to provide tax breaks. Well, we're taking in more taxes in the United States than we've ever taken in ever. And we're still $2 trillion a year short. Right now, they're saying that we may be a trillion dollars underwater every hundred days. What people need to come out is somebody needs to come out and say, look, we really need to start, start slowing down our spending. We need to spend less. We don't need to tax more. But at this point, what's gonna happen? The great reset's coming, and there's nothing we can do about it. If they print more, they can postpone it, but they'll never pay off the debt. If they did, the money supply would disappear. The entire money supply of the United States is based on debt. Every single cotton-picking dollar is based on debt. If they pay off the debt, the dollars disappear. They don't go into the treasury. The dollars are printed out thin air to create the loans. And when they're, you know, if the government pays them back, they'll just disappear. I know that's hard to, that's hard to imagine, but that's the way it is. I mean, read the audio book or listen to the audio book The Creature of Jekyll Island by Edward G. Griffin or G. Edward Griffin. Unbelievable book. But it's been this way now for a hundred years since the Federal Reserve was manipulated into existence by the secret cabal of bankers and the secret and the members from the uh, ruling class, I don't know, the Rockefellers, the Carnegies, the Rothschilds, they all created it. And the whole goal is to steal our money 2% a year. That's why it doesn't buy anything anymore. I mean, the cost of eggs in, in 1935 Versus cost of eggs a day. You think the chickens are getting paid more to give? Did it cost that much to get eggs? No. It's just the dollar doesn't buy as much. Why do stocks go up? Well, in some ways, some of the companies are worth more money. But even the companies that are mediocre, their stocks go up in value slowly too because the people who own the shares won't sell them for the same amount of U.S. fiat currency that they bought them for because they know that that same amount of currency doesn't buy anything. That is the one thing, though, that makes buying real estate in the United States such a great deal. If you can finance at low interest rate, and pay it off over a long period of time. The dollars you're going to pay back at the end of 20 years, 30 years, 
are going to be worth way less in buying power than the dollars that they gave you to purchase the property. So in that way, yeah, you, you will get, you will come out ahead, but not much. You need to buy absolute primo quality property, Mar-a-Lago's, stuff that they can't easily reproduce, stuff in prime locations like on the beach with a beautiful beach and a beautiful community, those properties still keep going up. If you buy a house in the middle of nowhere, Kansas, good luck on, on getting high appreciation. It's not happening. If you buy, if you buy, you know, one of the most exclusive, you know, condos in Miami, yeah. You want to buy one of those beautiful homes on the waterways in Miami? Yeah. You'll make money. Not going to do it on average property. So my little talk for people who were on X, who, who might be thinking of traveling and thinking of moving and retiring is if you get somewhere, think about renting. If you got money, Think about taking the money that you would normally have put into buying a place into Bitcoin. I mean, I think it's a, probably the biggest, hardest commodity uh, in the world. It's outperformed everything over the last 15 years. And the amount of money that you in Bitcoin terms that you will achieve that can always be converted slowly back into fiat to pay your bills will far exceed the value that you would be able to get reselling a condo or a house or a villa that you put hard money in to buy. So if you bought it for 250,000 US dollars and you stay there for two years, how much profit you gonna make on if you try to sell it? Maybe after commissions, you actually lose money. But if you rented it for two years and put that 250,000 in Bitcoin, the Bitcoin may have went up enough that it would have paid for all the rental and still gave you a profit. And it's easy for you to do whatever you want, stay or leave. So that's my little talk today. It's a beautiful day. I'm going to get back to doing some more exercise in the pool. Thank you so much for listening. If you like, please hit that like button. If you uh, want to share this with somebody to probe some thinking on their part, go ahead. If you want to if you want to pray to the, your God that Bitcoin goes up to like 200,000 a coin, I would greatly appreciate the help. <laughs> but I think it's going to make it there one way or the other sooner or later. The, the law of supply and demand will take care of that. It's only 21 million coins. All you need is a couple. Anyway... Thanks for watching. You have a fabulous morning, afternoon, evening, day, week, month. Take it all. I sure will. That's all, folks.